good afternoon. My name is Jose Alvarado, and I'm here to welcome you to today's Bethany SDA online worship experience. We're thrilled that God has brought you through another week. We're also happy that He saved His best for the end of your week. This month, we've been exploring the real power of prayer. Last week's service was a powerful reminder that prayer calms the storms within while God deals with our external storms. And I look forward to what the Holy Spirit will show us concerning prayer this afternoon. So share this video with someone you care about and open your hearts to the voice of the Holy Spirit as we consider the real power of prayer. And remember, you don't have to be at Bethany to be with Bethany. Good afternoon and happy Sabbath. I'm Pastor Gary A, and I would like to welcome you to another week of the real power of prayer. If you've had a long and challenging week, you've come to the right place. If you're looking to enhance your spiritual and your prayerful life with God, you are in the right place. Now, before we continue with this week's exciting service, I'd like to bring you a few announcements. It's almost the holiday season. And I know that you and I, we have a lot to be thankful for. And why don't we take this opportunity to be a blessing to someone else? Our Coats for a Cause drive is in full effect. So if you have a coat or some knitwear that you don't mind donating to someone in need, please reach out to us. Reach out to our mental awareness department through the email provided on your screen. We plan to hit the streets and the subway system to see how we can help keep someone warm during the winter. And speaking of warmth, let's send our warm birthday greetings to some of our members celebrating October birthdays. Sydney Baker, Diana Elise, Carolyn Fordyce, Ryan Smith, Jordan Vanterpool, and our own Tiffany Daniel. Happy, happy birthday to you. And after October comes the month of November. And you know what that means. Election season is just around the corner. And we want to pay attention to not only our federal elections, but also our local elections. Get out and vote. There's not much for me to say. Vote, vote, and vote. Finally, I'm excited about today's speaker, who's going to preach on the real power of prayer. I'd like to introduce you to my friend, Pastor Barone Savori. Pastor Savori hails from Los Angeles, California. He's a graduate of Oakwood University and the Andrews University Theological Seminary. He comes from two loving parents, one of whom his father was an Adventist pastor and evangelist. Now, Pastor Savori is not only a powerful preacher, but he's also a gifted praise and worship leader. He's had an opportunity to pastor at the Mount Rubido Seventh-day Adventist Church, and he currently pastors the Valley Fellowship Seventh-day Adventist Church. But most of all, Pastor Savori is a prayer warrior, and God is gonna use him to preach about the real power of prayer today. So I look forward to God richly blessing us throughout the rest of this service. See you soon. These are challenging times. The division and frustration are palpable. The balance is constantly shifting. The lines consistently blurred. Truths, half-truths, lies, mixed messages, confusing headlines. All in the middle of a nation whose back has been broken. Hope is drowned out by fear. Peace is muted by chaos. Dreams are crushed by reality. Finding God in the midst of this moment is difficult. As the election draws closer, countless voices will try to sway you one way or the other. Yet your responsibility is simple. Pray earnestly, 
seek God passionately, listen carefully, and vote how He leads you. God is sovereign. He always has been. He is faithful. He always will be. And nothing, absolutely nothing happens outside of His providence. This is where we find peace in this moment. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call the church and they will pray over him or her. And the prayer of the faithful will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess the trespasses one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of the righteous believers availeth much. I believe many of us would fit in the categories that the book of James is talking about. The sick, the people who have committed sins, the people who need prayers from their brothers and sisters in Christ. We have all the reasons to pray. So let us pray and seek God as we go through this difficult time in our lives. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your love, your mercy, your loving kindness, and your compassion. They are new every morning. And for that, Father, we thank you. We pray, Father, this day that may you forgive us of our sins. We sin against you, Father, and we pray that may you wash us and cleanse us with the righteousness of Christ. We pray that you forgive us of all our sins, our iniquities, our trespasses, and fill us with your Holy Spirit. We want, Father, to be directed and ordered by your word. So we pray that keep us focusing and studying your word and applying it in our lives. We come to you today as Bethany, full of thankfulness and grateful hearts for knowing that you're a God who always hears and answers prayer. This Sabbath morning, Father, we want to pray for the sick amongst us. As we go through this difficult time of this COVID-19 pandemic, we are praying not only for the Bethany members who are sick, but worldwide. We have brothers and sisters who have been taken ill. We pray, Father, that may you touch them. You know every part of their bodies that need restoration. So we plead for the balm in Gilead to just come down, reach down, O oh God, and touch your people and bring healing and restoration to each one of them. And as you heal us, O oh Father, physically, we pray that may you also heal us emotionally. Some of us have stressed out. Some of us are fearful. Some are unsure of what tomorrow brings. Everybody is agitated and nervous because nobody knows what is going to happen. But Father, we pray that you remind us that there is no reason for us to fear, for we have Jesus with us. You promise that you will never leave us nor forsake us. So no matter what difficulties we lie ahead, we are confident in knowing that you will always be with us and you will always guide us and protect us. So we pray that may you give us the peace of mind, the peace that passes all understanding. Take away fear, take away depression, take away anxiety, take away any emotional distress that we may be experiencing at this time. We thank you, Father, for we know you're a God who said, my peace I give you. Not like the world gives, but I give you peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding. That's what we need in this difficult time, oh God. We want to pray also for our church family. In our homes, Father, we pray that may we continue to lift each other up in prayer. As we go through this time, Father, we pray that may you be with our families at Bethany and beyond. We pray for our husbands, our wives, our children, our sons and our daughters. We pray for the grandparents, the elderly in our community. We pray, Father, that may you be in each home 
As they seek you, may you answer. As they call upon your name, may you respond to the call of your people, Father. We know, God, that when we pray, you are ready to come and rescue your people. For those of us, oh Father, who have young children who have gone back to school, we pray for divine protection, Father. You promise that you send us angels to encamp around those that trust you. We trust you to, for taking care of our children. We trust you for taking care of the wives and the husbands and the children. We trust you for taking care of us as we get in the subways, in the public transportation buses, as we get in the trains. We trust you as the kids go to school, as they probably go in the school buses. We trust you, Father, that you protect them. Keep them safe from the virus. Keep them safe from any ailment that may affect their health. Oh, Father, we thank you for what you're going to do to protect our children. We pray for a provision that comes from above. A lot of us have been affected by the COVID. Some have lost their employment. Some have cut their working hours. Some are having a challenge to get the resources they need for day-to-day -day survival. But Father, we know your word promises us that you will always take care of the people. David tells us that I'm old and I'm yet to see the righteous forsaken or begging bread. Your children who trust you will not be seen begging bread because you will provide. You are our bread of life. You are the water of life. So we pray that may you provide for your people and may you show your mighty hand of provision so that your name can be glorified in the lives of your people. We thank you, Father, for your provisions and we will be careful to give you the glory and the praise for taking care of all our needs. Father, we wanna pray for our church, our pastor, our church leadership, our church members in their different places of abode. We pray may your presence be in each home, oh God. May each home be protected and guarded by the battalion from heaven to fight any evil, any demon, anything that want to come and give chaos and bring chaos to our families. We thank you, Father, for your protection for us. Now we wanna come and say thank you, Lord. We can't just always ask and not come back and praise you for what you've done. We want to thank you, especially for Jesus, the one who bled and died for our sins. We want to thank you for the sacrifice that takes care of our sins. We want to thank you for his ministry, even today. He's sitting on the right hand of the Father, accepting our prayers, presenting them before the Father. We thank you, Father, for Jesus. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, the one who reminds us to seek you, to call upon your name, to pray. We thank you for that sweet comforter that you gave us. We thank you, Father, for the protection that you have given us thus far. A lot of us can testify that God has been with us throughout this year. If it were not for your grace and mercy, Father, we don't know where we would have been. But we thank you for that. We have been a faithful guide, a faithful protector, a faithful provider. And for that, we thank you. We thank you for our homes. There's food on our tables, clothes on our back, a roof over our head. We praise you, Father, for protection as we drive back and forth from our homes. You take care of our going out and our coming in. Everything we do, every place we go, your presence is evident. For that we thank you. We thank you for your word, oh God. Sometimes we feel so discouraged, but when we open the Holy Scriptures, we hear you speak to us directly and we get strength, we get encouragement. We refocus and know that we have a God who says, whenever you call upon me, I will hear. When you search me with all your hearts, I will be there for you. And we thank you for your word because it is a reminder that brings us back to you. And we hear you speak to us. So we thank you, Father. We praise you for so many blessings, which are so many, we can't number them. Only you, God, are worthy to be praised. Only you, Father, are worthy to be honored. So as we leave this place, as we finish the prayer, may our hearts never depart from your presence. May our spirits always be connected to you. Keep us ready, Father, for your soon coming. It is our desire here at Bethany, our families and beyond, that when you come in the clouds of glory, we want to hear you pronounce us good and faithful servants and take us home to spend eternity with you, where there's going to be joy unspeakable and full of glory. We thank you for that promise, Father. And while we wait for your soon coming, we still enjoy the wonderful blessings that you've given us in this world. We thank you for hearing and we thank you for answering our prayers. 
For we pray in the matchless and powerful and mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. No matter what your situation may be, all you have to do is say yes. Give it whatever it is to God, and he will do just what he said he will do. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey when the Spirit speaks to me with my whole heart I'll agree and my answer will be yes Lord yes I'll say yes Lord yes to your will and to your way I'll say yes Lord yes I will trust you and obey when your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart I'll agree and my answer will be yes Lord yes I'll say yes Lord yes to your will and to your way I'll say yes Lord yes I will trust you and obey when the spirit speaks to me with my whole heart I'll agree and my answer will be yes Lord yes so I'm gonna sing through it all through it all I've learned to trust in Jesus I've learned to trust in God through it all through it all I've learned to depend upon his word through it all oh through it all I've learned to trust in Jesus oh I've learned to trust in God through it all through it all I've learned to depend upon his word I've learned to depend upon his word I've learned to depend upon his word. I almost let go. I felt like a kiss couldn't take life anymore my problems had me bound depression weighed me down but God held me close so I wouldn't let go God's mercy kept me so I wouldn't let go I almost gave up I was right at the edge of a breakthrough I couldn't see it yeah the devil really had me 
But Jesus came and grabbed me, but he held me close so I wouldn't let go. God's mercy kept me so I wouldn't let go. So I'm here today because God kept me. I'm alive today only because of His grace. Oh, He kept me. God kept me. He kept me. God kept me. So I'm here today because God kept me. And I'm alive today only because of His grace. Oh, He kept me. God kept me. Yes, he did. He kept me. God kept me. In every situation, he kept me. God kept me. No matter what it is, he kept me. God kept me. He So I wouldn't let go. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. What a blessing it is to be joining you, Bethany SDA Church, this Sabbath. What a blessing it is to join you from Southern California here uh, at the invitation of my friend and my brother, Pastor Guerriere. God bless you. Thank you for this kind invitation to share the word of God with your congregation. Look, we are in this pandemic together. It's something that we are all on one accord. There seems to always be a difference between things that are happening on the West Coast and on the East Coast. And indeed, we're in different places. But we have this one thing in common during this season of COVID. We are all trying to get to the other side. And so my prayer is that God finds you healthy and strong, remaining encouraged and trusting him during this, during this time and during this season. And then also I pray that you as a congregation are loving on your pastor during this Pastor Appreciation Month. Your pastor, as many pastors have been during this time, have been working hard, uh, recording messages, preparing to push things out uh, to you all each and every week. So I pray that you show your pastor, Pastor Gary Hare, a little bit of love during this Pastor Appreciation Month and thank him for the ministry that he is sharing and giving to each and every one of you uh, as part of the Bethany SDA Church there. Uh, I'm excited to share the word of God, the topic, the power of prayer. Uh, there is a word from the Lord, and I'd like to direct you to Acts the 16th chapter, Acts chapter 16, uh, beginning with verse number 22. Uh, I want to share briefly from there. Acts chapter 16, uh, beginning with verse number 22. I'm going to read from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. And here's what it says. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had stripped them of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had been given a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. Verse 25. About midnight, Paul and Silas were, watch this, praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. The prisoners were listening to them. Will you bow your heads with me as we pray? Father in heaven, as you speak, 
Would you reach each person where they are? Give them a word. Give them what they need. Hide me behind your cross. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. In this scripture here, we find an interesting story. Because of the fact that, that, that Paul and Silas have had a journey and an experience with God. They have seen the power of God in their lives personally, and they have been preaching and sharing of the power of God as they traveled around. They had gone and set people free by sharing the word, the life-giving word of God with all who will listen. And, and as we pick up their story here in Acts chapter 16, we find just above the scripture that I just read a moment ago that Paul and Silas were doing what they were called to do. Their lives have been changed, they have been convicted, they have been called, and under conviction and the power of the Holy Spirit, they were sharing the word of God, and yet they were being followed by those that had a, a person who was possessed by a demon that was following them. And Paul and Silas, after being harassed by these men and by this woman, they turned around and spoke not to the woman. I don't have time to deal with that. They spoke not to the woman, but they spoke to the spirit that was in the woman and cast it out and her life was changed. It was changed so much that she now came into her right mind and the men that were controlling her no longer had authority over her and now she was free. I wish I had time to deal with the freedom that this woman experienced now that she was under from under the hand of her oppressors, but that's not my assignment here today. My assignment is to deal with the power Power of prayer. And as a result of Paul and Silas speaking to this woman and setting her free, those that were controlling her, aka her pimps that were there, now no longer have someone that they can control. Mm, hear me now today. I feel that there's a word right there for somebody. Somebody has been set free recently because what was controlling you, whose hand you you are under, you are no longer under their hand anymore. You have been set free. Paul and Silas set this woman free, but it makes the men that were controlling her angry. And so they bring charges against Paul and Silas and they get Paul and Silas thrown into prison. But before they are thrown into prison for doing the thing that sets someone else free, they are charged with a crime, they are beaten for the crime that they have committed, and they are thrown in jail, but not just any part of the jail. No, they're not thrown into general population. No, they're not thrown into a place that perhaps has windows and light. No, they are thrown into the innermost part of the jail, solitary confinement. Can I just step into your life for just a moment? Maybe you're in a season right now where you were doing the right things, but you feel as if the situation has turned on you for doing the right thing. Maybe you find yourself in a challenging situation for calling something out, for, for being able to, to, to set someone else free, and yet you find yourself for doing the right thing, uh, a, a, a person that is being persecuted for doing what it is that God has called you to do. Mm, hear me today that sometimes in our lives when we are doing the right thing the enemy shows up and tries to punish you for doing the right thing. You've been praying about that thing and you trusted and believed that God would do it but God did not answer the prayer the way that you expected God to answer the prayer and you end up in a worse situation than where you were before. My brother and sister do not give up now. Don't give in now. Don't 
don't quit now, God is still with you. Maybe you were doing the right thing for all the right reasons, but it seems as if you were in the wrong place at the wrong time and everyone has turned against you that was once for you. Maybe you are experiencing the pain and the challenge of doing the right thing, trusting God, believing in God, and it seems as if God has turned his back on you and you're in a worse place than where you were before. I don't know about you, but God has a way of working things out in our lives when it seems as if God has turned his back. Really, he's trying to set you up. Somebody ought to put in the comments right now that God has not turned his back on me. Somebody ought to let somebody know that God has not turned his back on you. And Paul and Silas are an example, number one, a grade A example of how we are to respond to life when it seems as if things turn out wrong when we're doing the right thing. Mm, mm. What is Paul and Silas response to an unfair beating at the hands of those that have imprisoned him? Oh, 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 I feel it calling on me right now in our community right now where we deal with unfair treatment and people who have been thrown into prisons and, and beaten and torn down and thrown into the innermost part of the prison unfairly and someone needs to speak out and speak up for them. We understand this challenge as a community and we wonder, is God there? Well, I would have you to know, my brother and sister, that no matter where you may be, no matter where you find yourself, the Bible says that his hand is not too short that he cannot reach us. His ear is not too far away that he can't hear the faintest cry of you, his child. I'm getting excited right now because God has heard you even though it feels as if God has abandoned you. You just got to hang on in there because God is going to blow your your mind. Mm, Paul and Silas, what is their response to being beaten? What is their response to being in prison? What is their response to being falsely accused? What is their response to being thrown into the innermost part of the jail? What is their response to their feet being placed in shackles? What is their response to all of these things that are done to them, even though they are done unfairly. My brother and sister, their response is to begin to pray. Mm, mm, mm. They begin to pray at the worst time in their lives. Might I suggest, might I suggest that, that their response to pray to God in the worst part of their life was not something that they had learned in that moment. I would suggest and posit that they, in their experience with God, had learned to praise God through adverse situations prior to the situation that they were facing then and there. I would suggest that my brothers and sisters Sisters, that even though we are going through right now, that the reason why you can praise right now, the reason why you can pray right now, the reason why you can shout right now where you are, the reason why you can lift your hands, even though it seems as if all of hell is breaking loose in your life, it is because when I look back and when you look back over your life and you see how God has moved in your life, you are compelled to do nothing else but to give God glory and give God praise to bless him in the midst of it all in the middle of the storm in the middle of the challenge in the middle of losing everything that's when you formulate your shout your shout and your praise and your prayer is not formulated on the mountaintop as much as it is formulated in the valley it is in the valley when you ain't got nothing when you're broke 
as a joke when you are there and you don't have all of the trappings that you learn how to cry out to God, how to praise God, how to lift up your voice, how to shout unto God with a voice of triumph. I love what Habakkuk says. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse number 17. It says this, though the fig tree does not blossom and no fruit is on the vines, though the produce of the olive fails and the fields yield no food, though the flock is caught, cut off from the fold and there is no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will exult in the God of my salvation. God is the Lord. It, God, the Lord is my strength in the middle of when you have absolutely nothing. That's when you learn to pray. Late in the midnight hour, crying out to God, soaking your pillow, moaning and groaning and mumbling and stumbling. God interprets all of that and downloads his Holy Spirit into your situation and can bring about a change. You learn how to pray when you are going through. So somebody who is going through right now, if you're going through right now, yeah, I want you to take a moment and I want you to pray right now. If you're going through right now, no matter what it may be, whether it's cancer, a health issue, a financial issue, issue, a relationship issue, a spiritual issue, no matter what it may be right now and you're in the middle of the darkest time of your life, I dare you to begin to cry out unto the name of God, the God of my salvation, the God who created and formed you and designed you and gave you access to the greatest power that has ever been known to man and that is the power of prayer. I believe that Paul and Silas had had an experience prior to them being in that prison cell there after being beaten and torn down their response is not anger and disappointment and frustration with God their response is to praise God and to pray mm. There's something good. There's something that happens to the devil when he sees somebody that should be held down, someone that should be frustrated, someone that should throw in the towel, and yet they continue to praise and bless God. Something, something happens. The devil gets confused. I wonder if there's somebody out there that wants to confuse the devil right now and begin to praise because everybody knows that you're going through right now, and yet they can't explain or understand why you are still praising. God. Well, guess what? They don't know your story and they don't have a heaven or a hell to put you in. So you better praise God and bless him in the middle of your valley, in the middle of your mess, in the middle of your innermost prison, in the middle of being strung out there with your hands extended and your feet placed in stocks. You better bless and praise God in the midst of it all. Their response is to praise pray and to praise. Saints of God, what would happen if a, if a prayer session broke out at the worst time in your life? I love this. Here's what the psalmist said. The psalmist said this in Psalm, in Psalm uh, 34. It says this, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and seeking the Lord, seeking the Lord. We're talking about the power of prayer. And he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant so your faces shall never be ashamed. I don't know who has a Psalm 34 praise, a seeking after God in their spirit right now. If that was for you, just put in the comment right now, that was for me. I will bless the Lord at all times. And my brothers and sisters, that means all times. You learn how to praise God when you go through some stuff. Listen to me. Listen to me. I had been in the church my whole life, but I learned how to pray and how to praise when I went through the darkest times of my life. 
life when I was saying to myself, I don't even know if I want to live anymore. That's when God showed up. That's when the power of prayer hit me. That's when God continued to reveal himself and say, no, son, your time has not come. I got more work and more people that need to be blessed by what it is that I will do through you in spite of you. I will use you. I will continue to bless you. And so I will shout it in the valley and I will shout it on the mountaintops. I will keep praying and praising no matter what is going on in my life. Paul and Silas, their response to being falsely accused, found guilty, beaten with rods severely, and thrown into prison, their response is not anger. Their response is prayer and praise. But here's, here's the power thing. Here's where I really want to get to today. And I'm just about done. I'm just about done, Bethany. Here's what I love about, about this story, about this scripture, is that they, they begin to pray and to sing at the worst time of their life. They don't know what the response is going to be. They don't know how long they're going to be there. They don't know if at the next moment that someone else is going to come in and beat them again. They don't know when they're going to eat. They don't know if they're going to be able to survive and live. They are in pain, in physical pain. They are in emotional pain. They are experiencing trauma in their lives. And yet in the midst of this moment, they choose to pray unto God. But then watch this. They don't pray silently. <laughs> they don't pray quiet. They pray out loud. They cry unto God. As a matter of fact, weren't they just thrown into prison because they were declaring unto God and setting people free under the power of God? And as a result of that, they were beaten and thrown into prison. And even that can't shut them up. They choose to still pray out loud. They are praying so loud that other folk could hear them. And let me tell you, I can remember as a young boy that I would hear coming out of my parents' bedroom. I would hear them as they would kneel down on the side of their bed, crying out to God together collectively saying, God, protect our family and protect our home and protect our ministry and protect our children and protect this nation and protect this city and protect all that is around them. They cried out and they prayed unto God. And as a young boy, I would overhear my parents parents praying. My brothers and sisters, don't hide it under a bush. Let it kind of over, over spill into some other area. So don't be quiet about it. I dare somebody to pray out loud, to cry out to God out loud, to open up their mouth and begin to declare the power of God. I don't know what they said, but what I do know is that whatever they said, other folk could hear it. It wasn't a secret. The other prisoners were able to hear them. And because they prayed, because they acknowledged that God was able to carry them prior to the situation, that God was with them in their current situation, and that God could bring them into their future situation. Prayer was a, a release from them for God to do whatever God needed to do in that moment and time in their life. Prayer was an acknowledgement that they were not in charge, but that God was in charge. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then as they begin to pray and, and to talk to God and celebrate God, not quietly, but openly. And so that others could hear that what is God's response, their response to being beaten down and being flogged and being thrown into prison and being thrown into the innermost parts and, and them being strung out as a starfish there in, 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 in shacks, in, 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 in stalls and, and having their hands bound and their feet bound what is their response their response is to pray and sing and when we respond and pray in our worst moment my brothers and sister guess who shows up God shows up and he shows out mm, that's my child that is crying out to me in their worst situation I know I got to show up and show out for them and because they cried out to God in that moment the Bible says that as they were praying and as they were seeking that it released the power of God and there was a great earthquake now now living here in California I know what an earthquake feels like you all in New York might not have ever experienced an earthquake but I've lived through some major earthquakes out here in California and let me tell you an earthquake is startling and it is and it is it is something that will shake you 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 begin to feel the ground move but there is nothing that you can do other than to hold on to the side and get to the safest place that you know I know what it's like to be in an earthquake and Paul and Silas are there there and the ground begins to shake. They can't control anything that is happening, but guess what? They don't have to because the God who created the earth that was shaking was the God that was that they were crying out to. And if the God who created the earth could cause an area-specific earthquake to be a response to their prayer, God will take care of them even if it means shaking the very ground. Do you know that when you pray, God is willing to to shake the ground of your situation and cause you to be free even though you cried out and you said God I don't know how I'm going to get out of this God says you don't have to worry about that because I got access as the creator of this earth if I need to bring it from the sky I'll bring it from the sky if I need to shake the ground for my child I will shake the ground if I need to cause the window of heaven to open out and pour out a blessing upon them guess what I got a cow on a thousand hills I got more than enough to bless them and when we cry out to God he is willing to shake the ground for you mm, and the ground is shaking but watch this here's what blows my mind that the earthquake was so violent that the doors of the prison were opened okay and that not only were, was their door opened, stay with me, but the doors of the other prisoners were opened as well. <laughs> they didn't have any, the other prisoners didn't have anything to do with Paul and Silas. They were just in the vicinity of the power of prayer. Oh, somebody ought to begin to shout right now. Somebody ought to begin to clap their hands right now. Somebody ought to begin to shout right now because when you are in the vicinity of someone that is crying out to God in prayer, that when the ground is shaking, that guess what? Not only do you benefit, but other folk benefit as well because you cried out to God and prayed unto God and God shook the ground on your behalf but guess what when he shakes the ground to your benefit others benefit as well others that were there in the prison had fringe benefits because Paul and Silas and maybe at the end of the day God said you were beaten you were imprisoned you were put in that situation so that you could pray and praise and I my power can be on display shake the ground and set not only you free but shake other people free as well Ooh, my God, my God, I believe beyond the shadow of a doubt that when we begin to pray, that not only when we receive a breakthrough and deliverance, that other people receive a breakthrough and deliverance as well. 
Paul and Silas, when they begin to pray and are set free, other people are set free. That's the power of prayer. Because we might be praying for God to change our situations, but when our situation is changed, it is a testimony unto others and they begin to see the power of God in their lives as well and they are set free as well. Here's the end of the story. The end of the story ends like this, that the, 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 the man that was charged with the task of making sure that they, that they, that they remain in prison, that someone who was assigned to them, they understood, they understood that Paul and Silas had a power that they could not explain. And so they wanted to make sure that they kept that power in check. But I don't have time to deal with the fact that people might try to harness the power that God has placed within you. But there's no man, there's no thing on earth that can harness you. When God has placed his hand upon you and given you power, nothing can stop you at all. I can't stay there right there, right there for today. But as they are there, the jailer who is responsible for them realizes that they are going to go free. And if he loses the prisoners, he will lose his life. Hmm. But Paul and Silas, can you imagine how the tide has turned? Paul and Silas are there and they see the soldier about the, the they see the guard that is there that is about to take his life. And they say to him, don't take your life. We're not running anywhere. And the jailer that is there, the guard that is there says, what must I do to be saved? And not only was the jailer's life changed because of the prayer and the power of that prayer, because of the songs that were sung, because of that moment in Paul and Silas' lives, not only was his life changed, but the life of his family was changed. This is uncomfortable as I come to my close. The uncomfortable thing about this is that maybe Paul and Silas went through that experience so that that jailer might be saved so that those prisoners might be set free. Who knows what the story is? We just know what the results are, that all of these people who were there experienced the benefit of the powerful prayer of Paul and Silas. So let's bring it, let's bring it home. Let's bring it home. What does it mean for, for you, Bethany? What does it mean for each and every one of you? Maybe, maybe in the situation that you're facing right now, maybe the prayer that you pray is not only to set you free, but to set other people free as well. When we begin to pray and cry out to God in our darkest moments and God hears our prayer and he begins to release what is holding us down, not only does it set us free, but it gives permission for other people to be set free as well. You might be the key through your prayer and through your praise to someone else's freedom. So we cannot neglect the power of prayer no matter where you may be. It's easy to pray on the mountaintop, but can we pray in the valleys? Because God does miracles in the valleys, just as he does miracles to get you to the mountaintop. Would you bow your heads and would you pray with me? Father God in heaven, in the name of Jesus right now, we just declare you to be the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the great I am, the God who was able to do exceeding and abundant above all that we could ask or even think God. Would you show up in the lives of those that are watching right now? Would you show up in the life of those that are frustrated or disappointed or on the verge of giving up, uh, Lord, on you? God, would you cause their earth to shake? And would you shake open the prison doors that are holding them in? Lord God, would you cause them to become unstuck in life and experience the freedom that can only come for you? God, I am praying for your power to show up and take residence in the heart of your children. 
and we will be careful to give you all praise, honor, and glory, not only because you have set us free from bondage, from the bondage of sin, from the bondage of our past, from the bondage of our mistakes, from the bondage of the, of, of, of the accusations of others, oh God, from the accusations of those that do not have a heaven to promise us and to follow through on. But God, may we trust in you and you alone, knowing that you hear our prayers, that you respond, and that you grant freedom. We thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen and amen. Bethany, God bless you. Thank you so much for this opportunity to be able to share with you. May God encourage you as you continue to serve him.